from the back of the room. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board of Selectmen. If we can call to order at 635. Uh, tonight we've got a couple of things that are relevant to the upcoming town meeting, which is this Friday. We're talking here 7 p.m. and I'm sorry, yeah, 7 p.m. I was in the wrong spot. 7 p.m. at the Sunland Elementary School. I've said it for the last couple of weeks. This is your chance to actually exercise your democracy, not buy into anybody else's. So show up at town meeting. Okay, I'm not yelling at the camera. Did the moderator plan anything special at this year's town meeting? That's a good question, Mr. Moderator. Does he have like a, uh, a, a surprise gift for the like the 200th person? No. Or it's kind of like the uh, Oprah show, the look under your seats, <laughs> folks. You know? For Powerball, and if I win all. <laughs> oh, geez, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, oh, be, ca go. be careful. <laughs> the only thing I'm going to tell you, Mr. Moderator, right, yeah. hey, Mr. Moderator, the only thing I'm going to tell you, be careful what you say. Be careful what you say because you're on tape. That's right. We'll hold you to that. So. And by the way, good job of putting your head down while you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight we're going to start with uh, Gary Breer. Gary uh, chaired the police search committee, so the members, Bruce is on that committee as well. We have boards of selectmen update, town administrator update, the capital planning committee meeting. Uh, prior to this is why we're a couple of minutes late. Uh, we have a couple of uh, election officers. Vic wants in again. Good for you, Victor. And then again, just to reiterate the point, uh, we are on a week from today at 6.30 the 29th, that's this Friday at 7 at the elementary school is town meeting. And then the following Saturday, May 7th, is the town election also at the elementary school. And I don't have the hours here, but daylight. Think daylight. We'll update those hours next week. Okay, uh, questions or comments from the board to start? If not, Gary, first of all, thanks for you and the committee for the work going through the screening process for the chief. Um, well, thanks so much, Scott. It was uh, it was actually a great process. Um, let me give uh, just a, a quick shout out to our uh, committee members, Al Albano, um, Bruce Bennett, who's uh, present here tonight, uh, Devin Melnick, Stacy Meyer, Lori Selene, um, Len Von Flatern, Mike Wozniakiewicz, and Aaron Wiley. Um, it really was a great group of people. Four of them brought law enforcement experience. We had three attorneys involved in the group. Um, and then there was a couple of us like myself who were, uh, don't have any of those skills, but um, hopefully contributed to the conversation and the discussion as well. So it was really a wonderful group. And, and uh, I appreciate uh, uh, the review that you provided. And I, I appreciate all of those folks volunteering to uh, participate in it. A really wonderful group. Um, and we, um, uh, we actually began back in the middle of March, um, uh, reviewed the resumes of uh, actually about 30 candidates. There was a very strong um, response to the solicitation. Um, and we really took that as a, um, um, a compliment to our community, that it is such a, uh, a lovely community. Um, there's lots of folks who are interested in, in uh, serving here, and, and uh, so that was um, wonderful to see. Um, we really found during the course of our conversation as we began to think about um, how to whittle down that pool, um, the kind of skill sets, uh, the abilities that we as a committee felt were important. And um, there was a number of them that, uh, that really um, uh, resonated with us uh, um, collectively. And among those was a strong preference for um, and skills in working with small communities uh, and a preference to do that. Um, we actually spoke with folks from larger communities, but the people who really jumped out to us were the ones who very consciously uh, were looking to serve small communities. And the reason that they were looking to serve them we, was because of um, the fact that it's, a, um, it's not anonymous when you're a police officer That's or a especially a police chief um, in a small community. You are a leader in the community, a leader among your um, police force. Um, and the people that, uh, that really jumped out to us were the ones who thrive in that kind of environment. 
good. So we also obviously were looking for <clears throat> strong um, financial skills, great leadership skills, both as a community leader um, as well as a, a leader of their force. Um, people who were interested and in, in, um, really felt a, um, uh, an alliance with the schools and working with um, with not only the administrators at the school, um, but school children. Um, we heard uh, that quite a bit from uh, the three candidates that uh, were submitting to you. Um, so it was a uh, really a wonderful process, and we are um, really delighted to pass on to you uh, the three individuals that um, uh, we've shared, uh, shared in our, our letter, uh, Eric Demetropoulos, Thomas Harding, and Jane Jalbert. And um, um, we wish you all the luck uh, in the world. Uh, I think you'll have a couple of hard choices between uh, them because every one of them uh, is extremely qualified and I think you will enjoy meeting each of them. That's great. So you started in March? Um, started in March? Uh, Mid-March. Mid-March. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. That's wonderful. First, go ahead, Tom. Gary, when you were um, doing your interviews, did did you happen to find out at any time where they had gotten the information about the job? Did they ever mention that? You know, was it through through you know was it through the newspaper ad or the chief's the beacon? Or and, and again, you, what we're finding, just so you know, is when you go to try to put an ad in the newspaper today. It's very expensive, and and I don't know if we get our, our best. Is that the if, is that the best place for us to be putting the ads? Is well, it is the newspaper a good place to put yeah, the ads in? That's a really good question, and mm. and I would probably say that that no, it's not. We had candidates apply from Vermont to Virginia. Um, I think we had someone from the Carolinas, um, quite a ways down south. So um, there were people obviously seeing this beyond the circulation of, uh, of our local newspapers. And um, Bruce may know um, more about what some of that, uh, those networks are for, uh, you know, online networks for police. Um, but uh, I definitely got the sense that folks were tapping into some of those uh, professional networks um, to learn about it. Is that what you thought they come from, Bruce? I, I looking, thinking back to the cover letters, most of them mentioned it was either on the MMA site, you know, Mass Municipal Association right. site, the chief site, and then there was, there was another site that I talked to someone and they looked it up and saw it on that site. Um, I, I think if you put a smaller ad in the paper, a less expensive ad, just so local people know it's available, you know, instead of point. Point. yeah, right. Like that, you know, just the health police chief Sunderland, whatever. It would know, be a lot cheaper than, and then local people could say yes, it was posted in sure. the paper instead of putting all the stuff and you know, contact the board for yep. qualifications or something. You could use the paper to actually reference going to the website. Well, yeah, exactly. Right. right. It's yeah. like for That's details, go to. Because exactly. mm -hmm. I found out some other things. Good, that, uh, yeah. You know, I look at the newspaper for the what, but. but <laughs> You know, everybody else is going to jobs.com uh, or LinkedIn or Monster something like that. Or whatever, yeah. all the, I never heard of them. Yeah. You know? So. Well, and again, it's just, we don't, fortunately, we don't do right. looking for department heads that, that often. Yeah. And, we're, and, and I know when we first started, we would put it in the, the, the Recorder, the Gazette, the Hartford, the, the Berkshire Eagle. Yeah. The, the Springfield, you know, we and, and the Brattleboro Reformer, and we are putting in all those pay, and, and we could do that for five hundred dollars. Right now, yeah. it's <laughs> it's five hundred dollars for a day. Sometimes yeah. so, some of these. Yeah, and, and, and looking back, the, most of them were via the internet, I, mm -hmm. as I recollect, or you know, word of mouth. So, so you think that was an effective that, that was an effective way to ad, advertise yeah. for that position? Yeah. yeah. Makes sense because they're so expensive now because people aren't reading the newspapers and they're going to the web, so they've got to make their money somehow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if, and if you look at the one ads in the newspaper, they've shrunk tremendously. Oh, yeah, what they were five or ten years ago. Yeah. You, know, you used to pick it up, there'd be two, three pages of it, right? Now, there's lucky if there's half a column. It's almost like it's required postings out there, you know, exactly. that, right. that you've got to go yep. through. Good point. So, well, that I, I mean, that's good. That, that way, what we can do is. <clears throat> 
it'd be nice if we put it in our minutes so someday we can go back and we can search our minutes about mm -hmm. that but but i but again i think it's um it's just something you know, we just a little add the paper so you know people that do get the paper and that's all they get it's mm -hmm. local they can see it you yeah know, you can see it's a, hey it was in the paper okay right. good point the other thing that uh, was really important to the committee and became very evident um, to us was um, the current budget or the budget we started out with mm -hmm. um, for chief um, we learned pretty quickly during the process that um, the a number of the candidates were actually making more in their current um, mm -hmm. situation than they would be coming to Sunderland. And each of them was informed about what um, the budget was we had. Um, and they elected to still come and interview for the position. Oh, nice. But we really wanted to make the point that that uh, Sunderland deserves a, a strong chief. Um, and uh, we think we've got some great candidates here. And we would encourage you to consider that budget as, uh, um, uh, as you move forward through your mm -hmm. process, um, that there may need to be a little bit more in that, uh, in that pot to be able to get the quality uh, people that you really want. Good point. We did at the last meeting add five thousand dollars to that line. So, but it, you know, it's a step in the right direction and part of a larger discussion. We've heard from department heads for a, a number of years, and as Tom, uh, Tom said earlier, thankfully we don't have a high turnover. There's there, we just don't have a high turnover. So that said, uh, you there is a little bit of being lulled into complacency uh, when you don't have a lot of turnover, people leaving for other opportunities, and. Uh, a holistic view of all of our positions really is uh, in some some in the rears right now. It's got to be taken a look at over the course of the next budget cycle, with the recognition that it's not just the department heads. It's there's a lot of those that are. If you look at our comp towns, and we do a pretty good job of choosing comp towns that are truly comparable, as opposed to you know, negotiating comparable, which is always another tactic. Um, that, you know, we're in the low means for most of them. Yep. So I appreciate that, that piece yep. of feedback. That's important. So all the more reason to come to town meeting. I'm going to keep saying it all night tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got three names here. So, oh, go ahead, Tom. I, I was also wondering, during, during the course of your discussions with the candidates, was there a question that you asked that had a particularly interesting answer, or was there a question that you would want to, if you could have an opportunity, could you rephrase a question, and or is there a question that you wish you had asked that you hadn't thought about? Um, I'll take the first crack at that, Bruce, and then you can uh, uh, be interesting to hear your thoughts, too. I, I think um, a couple of our questions came at the question of um, the relationship with the community, mm -hmm. um, relationship with uh, town administrators as well as other town departments. Um, and, and they really began to um, uh, get at how does this person um, work with others, both within mm -hmm. the business community um, um, and in, uh, in other parts of the community. Um, and and I, we found that that was really quite important um, to us. They need to be good communicators. They need to be uh, pretty well balanced. Um, they need to be open to uh, uh, conversation and discussion. And so that was, was uh, I, I think that was a theme that, um, that ran through quite a bit. And as I mentioned earlier, that sense of connecting to the community, a, a um, definitive preference for working in a small town as opposed to even a, um, uh, you know, a town twice our size. So those were a couple of things that we felt were very important um, and uh, came through pretty loud and clear with these candidates. Bruce, what would you add to that? I, I think what I like and what, what I think is important is the questions that we had opened up the discussion and then you have follow-up questions to that, that, you know, arise from their discussions and, and that way for instance their leadership style you know uh, you know they talk about their leadership style give them a slight situation what kind of leadership style would you use to solve this problem you know and then you get a real insight of, of what what's going on in their mind how they're going to try to 
solve the problem, mm -hmm. you know, through their leader, whether it be with the community or whether it be with the employees of the department. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, you know, I, I think the questions we asked were very good questions, but most of them required some sort of follow-up. You know, whether it was, you know, what you're doing in the schools, you know, how would you go about that? What's important in the schools? And, and I, I gathered more from their personality or their qualifications or, you know, what, what we would think that they would need in a small town mm -hmm. to be successful. Yeah. Good point. Um, and, and it's, you know, you have to be careful how you word those, of course, but, you know, it's, it, it's within the realm of the question. So um, it, it, it was very interesting. I mean, some of them opened up really well, mm -hmm. um, and some of them, you know, they, they basically relied back to a certain style that, you know, really we didn't feel was a fit for the community. Yeah, I, I you know, it's, it's interesting you said that, because I, I think sometimes, and sometimes people not, may not realize it, but when we hire a department head, a, a fire chief, a police chief, town administrator, highway superintendent, we, you, the board of selectmen is a group of three. You can't, one of us can't micromanage it. You know, he says, all right, Scott, you got the police department. And Scott can go <laughs> tell the police department chief what to do every day. Yeah. We, is that what you've been doing, Scott? Yeah. So, so, so we, there has to be a level, exactly a, right. a tremendous level of trust between, in a small town now, there has to be a, that, that, that person that you put in those positions, that you appointed those positions, you have, there's a level of trust that you have to have with those. And I, I think that's, for me, that's the hardest part of asking a question is because you have to develop that, that trust so that the person that, that you're appointing um, you you never want to get in a thing where you're mandating somebody does something because you've lost it at that point. You you want to be able to discuss those, be able to discuss those things, and and I think that's important. I mean, last time we did the chief, and it was with Jeff. I think when we hired Jeff, is we asked uh, residents, and we'll add to again to send in potential question mm -hmm. and someone asked a question or submitted a question to find joint venture or something and we all looked at one another and said what the heck does this mean we, we didn't know what it meant and and uh well, we said all right we'll put, it on the, we'll put it on the, one of the questions that we asked and we had five finalists and each one of the fine finalists five finalists a answered it differently mm -hmm. um but <laughs> you could tell some that were coming back with the answers they were coming up with the answer on the fly mm -hmm. versus some that kind of had a the experience. Well, they, they kind of had an experience. And I thought that that was it was it was funny because something that we didn't come up with that we didn't know the answer to, to me, was a telling question to ask. One of the things that um, we learned as we went through the process, or at least I learned, maybe the folks with law enforcement background are well versed in this, but Law enforcement has really changed over um, the last decade or so. Technology has changed. Um, you could see in some of the candidates who had clearly done a ton of homework um, through the internet, through Facebook, oh, really? through a variety of things to learn about our mm -hmm. town. Um, That's good. Some, somebody mentioned your interview with Sherry, and so they watched yep. that to see how well uh, it's out there. And uh, oh, that's a good point. <laughs> I, I, I would be concerned if somebody doesn't do that. You yeah. know, it's yeah, yeah. 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 So um, <clears throat> you know, the folks that you're going to speak uh, be speaking with are are um, quite aware of those changes, those hmm. technology changes, and there's also. Um, you know, various crises from the opioid crisis to um, gun violence to a variety of other things that are really shifting the way law enforcement works today, the way they communicate with um, the community, um, and the, the way they need to look at their work. And so I think there was a couple of, there is, there is um, territory there for you to explore as well because I, I think things have really changed uh, or evolved over the last um, several years in ways that that uh, law enforcement can be more effective um, and be challenging. 
if, if I could, I think you hit up one of the, one on the hit on one of the important topics about, and especially now, you know, how you're looking for somebody who was seeking out a small town. And I think, especially if you follow the, the stories in the news now, I think it's more important than ever that your like, police chiefs and law enforcement are even more tied to and embedded to the community that they serve in, because that's when you have problems on both sides is when they're removed more from the community that they're actually in. Yeah. And I think that that's a very important thing. Good point, David, good point. Go ahead, Bruce. One, one thing that came up during our interviews with the realm of residents was um, residents required. Mm -hmm. You know, several of them asked about residence requirement, mm -hmm. requirement of living close to, to, to Sunderland, yeah. you know, a, a requirement of whatever. And I, I think as a body, we felt that, 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 you know, if it's not a residency requirement, it'd be within a certain radius of the town, yep. you know, so that they can respond like someone from, say, Hartford, Connecticut, Good point. Right, they you have know, a long commute. It's, it's a they're not going to be attached to the community. Right. You know, where if they live in Leverett or you know even maybe Northampton mm -hmm. or Amherst or Greenfield, there's an attachment. Right. Right. You're still close enough. Yeah. And I think that's something that you're going to have to discuss mm -hmm. when it comes down to negotiations with a contract. Because you know, this is something that we require. Right. You know. And, and you know, go from there. Mm -hmm. I think as a committee as a whole, we felt that was very important. So it, it's, it's interesting, over time, I would say, if you asked me 15 years ago about residency requirement, I thought it was an absolute half must. Yeah. But you know what, as, as you gain experience, one thing, if, sometimes if you're a chief of police, if you're in that, in that line of work, um, you may have to make an unpopular decision. And if you're married and you have sons and daughters, um, they have to go to school. And how are they, you know, how can that, and, and I can almost, in, inside of me, I can justify saying, I understand, you know, it'd be great if you lived in town, but I could also understand someone that may not live in town, but live right close to town. Mm -hmm. I, and, and again, that just comes from my experience, and, and you know that kind of a personal choice. But I can understand it today. I can understand it today, and, and it is somehow sometimes your you know your opinions can change over time. And it would be great to oh, they have to live in town. But what about that that person's kids? What about a, his wife or partner? That you know you can't go down to the local, you can't go down to Millstone because you're running to somebody. So. I, it's, it's a very good point to, for us to think about. Thank you for bringing yeah, no, it up. It, it is a difficult Absolutely. situation. I mean, I know that from growing up. So, I mean, you know, it is a difficult I know. thing. You would know. That's yeah, right. Yeah, and, and, and <laughs> I, I think it's adjustment that everybody makes, whatever it is, you know. Um, so, you know. But people, but they have to, they, they should be given the option to make their, their yes. choices. Yes. And, and you're right. I, I wouldn't want somebody living in Hartford. Right. Right. Because if there's a break in, or, or and, and we have, I mean, we've been lucky with Evan and um, Jeff over the last 20 years. If something happened in town, both of them were pretty much right there. And, and the other thing that came up is, is Gary talked about the internet and everything. I mean, one of the candidates told us about something that happened the night before, and none of us had a clue there was a break in in town. Candidate because it was on Facebook. Sure. Yeah. And, and, yep. and we didn't have a clue. <laughs> Get, gotta follow the police page on Facebook, you know? And, and, yeah. and, and, and you know what? I mean, that kind of thing, that, that opens my eyes, you know? Sure. So maybe I gotta get on Facebook, but then again, I don't want it. So. <laughs> it's, <laughs> so you're, it's just, today, tell them you're Gary Breer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm I'm like, like, oh, <laughs> no, you don't want that. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want that. That point also. Um, I think comes back to the question of how close do you need to be. Technology right. today right. allows yeah. us to be as close as we need to be right. almost constantly. Um, like, to, yeah, this, to good or ill. Well, right? it gets back to your point too about how policing has changed and, and that's one of them is the tools and yeah. communication tools have changed drastically over the last 10 yeah. years. So that's an excellent point. 
Yeah, proximity versus location. Very, very different places. Yeah. We're really, really close to you know the Cassini space capsule right now, yeah. we, if we choose to be. To say nothing of the limitations right. it places on you if you put a residency requirement in there too. You know that would yeah. certainly shrink your pool down dramatically. Good point. For any number of reasons. Good point. One of the, one of the things that uh, we have <clears throat> seen um, is is like the communication of Facebook. Um, it's almost you're actually training people to look for information in that location. Mm -hmm. the, the hardest part is that you have to maintain it and continue. Mm -hmm. yeah. If something wants that information, they're going to want to to go there. And, 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 and we've, also, we've also seen, um, especially with police and safety people, when you when you look at they showed a, a picture what was it Wellesley Scott it was Wellesley yeah, at that Wellesley yeah. and it showed an officer and he was an accident he was at an accident scene and he had to dower and it was a bad accident he had to dower face um, and you would not want to talk to that guy but then the next page it was at a school or something that, and he was and he was he had little kids around him, a big smile uh -huh. so it, show, it shows officers um, or you know in different atmospheres so people understand that they're they're real people, and they're not just people that hand out uh, tickets for speeding or going through a stoplight, but they're real people also, and they care. So, you're a good, I like that. Well, again, well done, and we appreciate not only the, the work, but the thoughtfulness that goes into it. It's easy, to, it's easy to go down the list and simply go, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, but the thoughtfulness and the dialogue of a working group, especially a good working group, there's a um, few experiences better than that. So we thank you so much for your recommendation. Oh, we haven't talked about that yet. We'll get through town meeting. We'll, we'll Soon. probably we'll probably uh, um, next next week we'll we'll, we'll start coming start up our thing next week. Up. We'll start we'll start thinking. I know what we're not going to do. We're not going to schedule an entire Saturday of meetings. No, let's like, not do that again. Right that once that no, didn't work. Didn't work at all. Um, I would think I would say we should interview in the next couple of weeks, yeah. right? I would think we'd be having we'd be negotiating four to six weeks at the at the outset. I would think we'd be pretty quick. I, I don't. Yeah, because that was a question. They, they yeah, yeah. A I would say pretty. It's, it's a valid question. Yeah, you know, they've got yeah. timelines of their own too to worry yeah. about. So, yeah. yep. I, you know, our our original thing was that we wanted the people on on board by June. I think we're still. Yeah, I think yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. I, right. We yeah. said June, right? Yeah, yeah. and they have this. I think we want. Yeah. I, so I would say we're on tap for that. I, yeah. I mean, the big thing was you guys getting through that, and you got through that in a time like that. We wanted definitely by town meeting. So you did that. That. That makes so perfect. Now for us, it's. it's we, we pro I would think we're interviewing in May. No, mm -hmm. absolutely. We're interviewing in May. We should be offering by the end of May. Yeah, we also don't, I would think uh, we would need to avoid the sense of a pause in their process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, our process has got to have some linearity to it, and yeah. any candidate shouldn't be out there thinking, well, geez, what's going on with that? Yeah. That also sends a message. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and just so you know, um, the the people closest have been um, notified by voice, uh, mm -hmm. and the others have been uh, um, contacted via email also. Okay. So, yeah. so we've taken care of that. Um, even the uh, people who weren't successful, have you notified them? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's okay. yeah, that's oh, what we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. Oh yeah, before tonight's right. meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before yeah. tonight's yeah. meeting, um, that's really important. It's fair. Uh, yeah, that's a good step. Uh, we we yeah. thought we there was three that we wanted to make sure yeah. that yeah. they heard from us personally. Yeah. So yeah. Sherry Sherry did that for us last week. So and again, we want to do it, we we try to do we want to do it the right way. Yeah. Try because sometimes, despite all our efforts, it still ends up being the right way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do want to give a shout out to Sherry. She was very supportive, really helpful in. Uh, helping us get started and, mm -hmm. and then with all the little questions and challenges that we would come up with um, along the way um, she couldn't have been um, more helpful it, it reconfirms it how important a good town administrator is absolutely yeah. true mm -hmm. it, it's not just helping the selectmen but a lot of the other things that go on and we're very lucky Great points well again thank you so very much I do appreciate it and uh, we'll keep you posted can't wait. Mm. <laughs> new, uh, 
<laughs> Come in and coach us. <laughs> okay. Next up, we Friday got, night. Yeah, right. It's right. Friday. Friday night. So we've got minutes of April 11th. Voluminous minutes. I know. Rocking. Uh, motion on the minutes. Second. Motions made and seconded of the minutes of April 11th. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay. Uh, board updates. I, I, other than the Capital Planning Committee, which met uh, prior to this meeting, I don't have anything to add except to remind people about town meeting. I'll sound like a bit of a broken record. Years past, I used to get choked up over that because town meeting means a lot. It still does. But it means nothing if the room's empty. Is that this week? That's this week, yeah. Friday at 7. Anyway, hey, it was a softball, but thank you. Hey, you know. <laughs> David, anything you want to add? Um, to... to, to Follow up on something you mentioned earlier with the personnel committee. Personnel committee met after our uh, last meeting, and uh, I mentioned the the two percent that we put in there, and that, and that actually everybody was ecstatically happy with that because that they're like that's exactly and across the board what was mm -hmm. what we were really trying to achieve and everything. Oh, so and then for that meeting we actually had some numbers to look at. So okay, um, and then we're going to be um, taking advantage of a. Uh, Recent survey for Wade stuff and everything. So uh, next, Nick, for the next budget cycle, that's our big goal is to start doing a good comprehensive review because we don't want to be just slipping down the slope, you know. But, but you have to be obviously reasonable within the budget and everything too. But you know, there's we need to be able to maintain a good staff. Points. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Tom, you got anything you want to weigh in on? Uh, last week we had a stop to county EMS. Um, meeting. I think we're all set. Um, right now, I guess we're not going to uh, proceed with any uh, warrant articles for us to South County, so we'll be able to uh, strike that um, thing. Um, the budget for them, the South County, was, was okay. There were some conversations uh, today from Deerfield about the um, um, Deerfield's um, administrative fees, but I mm -hmm. think the Deerfield Finance Committee has that underhand now. So I think, you know, they, they, they've got it worked out. So I so, think they're all set. So the oh, the 17 budget's set, and there's... It should be. I, I believe it's all set. Okay. So we're, we're not going to see a change in assessment? No. Right, okay. right now, it should be, as I understand it, it should be all set. Okay. Good. Um, so, so I think that that was that was okay. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, so we're we're gonna move forward. Good. Anything else? Nope. Okay. So we have uh, town administrator updates. It's been quiet down the office. Annual town meeting is going really, really smoothly. Sorry. <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> yeah, the, just enough of that look of terror. Like, yeah. what's he talking about? What office is he? Uh, I'm anyway. looking forward to Friday. <laughs> Any update, Sherry? Um, just as you said, working on putting on the finishing touches on the um, budget and the warrant articles and handouts and those things for Friday's meeting and starting to think about planning for fiscal year 17. Um, I'm starting to schedule some meetings with the different boards and committees and Good. commissions to talk about projects and how to proceed and and all of those things. So um, nice. Okay. So then, thank you, Sherry. Next up, we have in Mr. Mr. Chair. Please. Uh, you want to talk about the annual report? The annual report is online currently. Yeah. Just, let, just let people know. It is currently online. Uh, we're delivering a single copy, as has been the practice. Many of you don't know that uh, one of the things that uh, the board does annually is deliver a copy of the annual town report to uh, the individual or individuals that it's dedicated to. Many of you don't know that that's the first copy that goes out. The in memoriam copies are thereafter, and uh, I hope to have that uh, delivered uh, either tonight after this meeting, if the sun's still up, 
Uh, if not, <laughs> then uh, tomorrow during the day. But the annual report is uh, up and posted online. I'd like to take the time to thank all the folks who worked on it, contributed letters, collated, organized, anguished over, and uh, got uh, the annual report done. Um, so if at some point in the future you see a future board member coming forward to your house with a colored book in your hand, you're the no. proud winner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's in my briefcase. And so far, myself and I think Rock Warner are the only ones who have seen it. So there you with go. the exception of uh, Cindy downstairs, just put it together. Anyway, how's that for an update? Well, I just, yeah, I mean, we want to make sure people know it is available. Yeah, so absolutely right. Absolutely if right. If they're looking for it. Yeah. Great point. Okay. Um, the Capital Improvement uh, Planning Committee met earlier tonight. There were two items on our uh, open pieces of homework. Uh, we have Bob is, you can use the format. This is my marked up version. You've got one like that. Okay. So the capital budget is going to have backing information behind it. But in a hand, handful of years now, we've voted a capital budget as opposed to individual uh, warrant uh, articles. We open this up, uh, as has been the moderator's practice in the past. We talk about the, all of them individually. That's quite all right. But we voted as a, as a budget. So what you have in here is a budget um, that's being uh, submitted to town meeting out of capital stabilization, uh, one, two, uh, Highway radio replacement system, highway, and this comes out of this list comes out of our regular budget process. There's the operating budget, then the expense summary. Excuse me, then the capital summary. Um, a highway truck uh, purchase, a lease in this case here, or borrowing. And I'll talk about that was one of our action items tonight. We had two tonight. That was one of them. Uh, a holder payment. Now, this is something that we have. Uh, voted in a prior year, and this is our next installment on the lease coming straight from capital stabilization. Uh, it's, the, it's called Swampfield Drive. Love that name. Swampfield mm -hmm. Drive repaving. One of the pieces of our uh, meeting tonight was to have better definition about start to finish, total area to be covered in style. Um, plow replacement. This is a direct replacement of some existing equipment at the highway garage. Uh, the uh, Sunderland Public Library HVAC system has four, 13 or 14, I forget now. It's either 13 or 14 individual units. Uh, and this is to uh, continue with a compressor replacement program. Uh, the Graves Memorial Library actually has, and this is the Swampfield Historical and Graves Building, actually has put forward a three-year capital plan. And the Capital Planning Committee uh, is, is recommending that we fund the first year of their three-year plan. Uh, if you looked at the total submission, it was spread out, and it's in our, our capital submission book. It's spread out over different budget cycles. So we wanted to fund uh, the first year. That's this $18,000. The police radio replacement, uh, again, a portion of their existing stock. We're going to phase those in over time. And then this building, uh, through what was originally a depart Department of Local Services review of our infrastructure, our IT audit, uh, came about. It's like, okay, so there's area for improvement with telephones and information and data gathering for this building. And that's what that last item is. So voice over internet, rewire the building. Uh, for uh, higher speed data, make it a little more reliable with servers and backup downstairs, get them in a space. Uh, this uh, came out of some budget development. So for a total capital budget uh, submission to the town meeting of $161,003. Now, Bob, tonight's action was centered around the lease of the truck, and we had a handful of options both on trucks in leasing formats. So the Capital Planning Committee is recommending to the board to bring to town meeting what would be the maximum total value. And if we go through the lease, we go through the truck final specifications, the lease, fi lease final specifications, the expectation is we will be well below this value going forward. That allows the money to revert back to capital stabilization next year. It's not used. So not unlike what we what the town did with the uh, culvert, culvert replacement, replacement. Yep. we appropriated eighty thousand dollars and spent twenty two, and it went stayed right in capital stabilization. What's the number you're going to come forward with? Oh, this one here is thirty thousand, and for the highway truck is thirty thousand two ninety five. 
That's what you're still coming for. Yep, yep. That is the that's the recommendation from the I committee. Understood. I thought you were, one of the options was to purchase it outright. Um, even if we did go about purchasing it outright, there'd be a borrowing authorization because they're just under two hundred thousand. They're between one fifty-one and one ninety, or the prices that we got. So we're kind of thinking a lease or a or, or a debt piece, and that that's a work we'll be doing after town meeting. So we're starting this year from capital. Is yeah. this a lease to own or lease to lease? This is lease to own. Kind of like the holder. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Very much like the holder. And this is based on the five-year model. Okay. On a five-year model? Five-year model mm -hmm. for the 30000 Was it seven? I think you're right. No, it was a seven-year model. Seven years? Sorry. Okay. Seven-year model. Seven-year lease. Five years doesn't add up to the... No, seven years. So we're starting this year with 74000 existing in capital stabilization. Uh, we've raised 105000 uh, for a total of 179, what we're going into town meeting with, and we're going to we're proposing a spending of 161,000, coming out with 18,600 remaining in stabilization, okay. capital stabilization. So that was our first item of business. The sec, go ahead, Bob. Just in terms of explanation, mm -hmm. when you say you've raised 105, the question is going to become. Where is that coming from? Sure. It actually comes from taxation. It was an uh, override question. And that override question was now in its second full budget cycle. Uh, we raised $100,000 with the question, um, and that stays on the tax rate. And the way the capital stabilization statute uh, is written, we're allowed to have not more than a 2.5% increase annually if it's voted by the board and we have voted that this year that's not to say we'll be voting that exclusively in years prior there's a bit of a catch-22 there though in that if you use the two and a half it has to be on the prior years against the prior year's vote so if, if some future board decides that they would like to raise a dollar then they're only going to be raising you know a dollar 25 the next day next year excuse me but no, you raise a good point. And it is interesting, you know, people may or may not even remember the um, consternation this particular body went through getting capital stabilization funded. Uh, a good decades long fight, right, Tom? Longer than that's gone. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, and the, fact, the fact is, is one, one of the reasons this year's budget process has not seemed as chaotic is Mm -hmm. Is that we have this capital money? That's one. And and, and and again, when you have a, you're at your house, your your home, your apartment. Mm -hmm. um, we all make decisions and about you know, do you buy new furniture? Do you buy a new car? Do you buy? Um, and we had, and and there's sometimes you don't have a choice, but you have to buy the new car or you have to buy the new truck, whatever. Or we had no a good used car. <laughs> we had no we had no way to to buy it. Mm -hmm. So we were always using free cash or stabilization, and yeah. and it was just causing us many problems. So now with the capital stabilization, we always want for a long time, and I and I, I would say probably fifteen years we've been trying to talk about some type of capital budget. Mm -hmm. um, so this, it was it, it was a long time coming, but. If you're trying to put together a budget and you're putting the stability together in a budget, it's right. very important. Yeah, there's a couple of pieces, Bob. I'm going to circle back to. Uh, I got to use that term way too much the last week. Next time I say circle back, I cut it out. <laughs> okay. Um, there's another piece of uh, that kind of um, operating budget stability or programmatic that I, I, I believe, I truly believe, we're benefiting from, and that was the work three or four years ago about the use of free cash guidelines developed with this body and the finance committee. Well, what can you use them for? What should you use them for? So we're not living windfall to windfall. And now that guideline establishes a third of the total value going into the future year's free cash, a third of its value into, uh, in this year, stabilization, straight stabilization, 
and then uh, the final third to fund the current operating budget with a small component going toward OPEB uh, liability, the OPEB trust fund. So again, that kind of formula, it's boring. I, if anybody's glazing over it back there in, in, in the audience, bear in mind that it is making for at least this and maybe the beginning of last year, I really saw its impact, uh, some stability in how we go about and allocate our funds. And again, that's good governance. That's not politics. So the next piece that the, the board uh, capital improvement committee worked on capital planning committee worked on was what do we do about the engineering um, expense for getting to 75 percent for, one, for the north main, for the north main construction now there's two pieces to this one is we have CHA working on 25% uh, design to keep us qualified for the TIP program. They've come back after some uh, initial work, survey work, infrastructure survey, above ground survey, public hearing input, and they've asked for some um, additional hours uh, to be granted them to get those questions answered, including filing for some exceptions to design. Mm -hmm. And they also have provided a budget to get to 75% schematic design. So what you have in front of you is uh, North Main Street Reconstruction Engineering, a value of 63686 And there was some discussion at our last Capital Planning Committee about, well, is it really good to take out a capital stabilization? Not because of availability of funds, but does it constitute capital, really? You know? Right. What was the definition of it? Yeah. Yep. You put your hands on it, or you walk in the building, or you drive it. You know, capital. Capital is a life cycle of blank. And it usually is a physical object. Now, that point can be argued about engineering on something like this. We felt it was appropriate this year to bring this re this request and our subsequent recommendation for it under stabilization, straight stabilization. We're starting the year with, we're finishing the this year. We go out of town meeting with effectively uh, just under... Four hundred thousand dollars. We're starting stabilization at three sixty-eight one fifty-one. We're adding one hundred and three free cash guideline. We're looking to appropriate this sixty-three six eighty-six, and that leads into the next part of my discussion uh, from the capital planning committee. Uh, after a fair amount of discussion, its recommendation to the board is that we also include the fifteen thousand dollars that was requested by CHA to go about the schematic design. Um, exception rules uh, that are currently open. Now, as Sherry pointed out more than once, uh, we could spend the 15000 and get a firm, and actually one of the members of the committee who's in the business said, you know, it might make sense to spend your 15000 get to the complete deliverables of your 25% design. Yeah. Your contract is complete. Are you happy with the engineering firm? If so, you can go on to your next step. If not, you can take your deliverable and go back with an RFQ for services. So the recommendation actually, and it's got to be modified, is to bring forward uh, to the town meeting or the recommendation from the Capital Improvement Planning Committee is that the board expend $78,686 out of stabilization, and it is for the North Main Street Reconstruction Engineering. So the 15000 is an extension of the existing contract. And then the remaining 68, 686 is the budgeted value to get to 75%. Okay. So that was a long way around. Hmm. There was a lot of detail there. But uh, I applaud the discussion downstairs. Uh, we have a cross-functional group. And there's a lot of good questions. So that's good. How to characterize that? I get it. Right. All right. Next up, of course, is the waste treatment plant, and the waste treatment plant has a budget here. Yep. I could go back a little bit on that sewer project. Yeah. Uh, sewer or, or or I mean North Main Street yeah. reconstruction. Yeah. At one point, somebody raised the question of they had heard that there's going to be some eminent domain taking of property, and I told them no because yeah. I didn't think there was so. That may be something on top sure, of sure. you guys may want to... To be prepared for us. So we can bring the schematic designs with us. Now, there's been no discussion from the engineering perspective about 
taking of, of property. We talked a lot about widths and paving and lanes and where to put bikes. There's a, there's a, I'll, I'll come to some of the discussion that was downstairs, and David's participated in it as well as Sherry. I mean, there's an initiative at the state level now for what's called the Complete Streets Program. That runs kind of afoul a little bit of standard design. And so you have this tension right now, and not even friction, just tension, while we talk about complete streets, walkability, curbs, accesses, sidewalks, bicycles, all of those things, and what the DOT currently has for standard designs for a road like that. Okay. That's actually what this $15,000 is geared toward addressing. And I think to, to your point and the note about eminent domain, if I remember, it probably came out of a point where at some point where there was mention of, well, you could do sidewalks all the way down the expanse of the project on both sides, but there was a point where maybe oh, you'd need to take right. a little bit of land to do that. And all the way down. that was, we kind of specifically avoided doing that Got it. because of that. Because I think it was on... Yeah, on the other side, yeah. where you, if you had to if do you that, you'd have to... On both sides, right. Plus a bikeway. Are you right yeah, there? exactly. Pushing it. Yeah. If you, if you wanted to go for the, the, the full enchilada, as right. it were. And, we're, you know, you want to avoid that at all costs, obviously, you know. So but It's a good point to be, be a, a cognitive of if that's an area of concern going forward. And we can bring the to current schematic with us and talk to what this is about. Right. I appreciate you bringing that up. And then lastly here is uh, wastewater treatment uh, operating uh, operators have got a, a project budget of $65,000. Not a detailed budget. We're looking for an appropriation of $65,000 out of the sewer reserves. And that has to do with uh, inflow and infiltration analysis. And this is system-wide in this case here. We'll have Rich uh, get us our details. One of the members of the committee uh, you know, said it's really important that in these proposals to ensure to get some of the specifics, contact hours, meters, meter readings, et cetera. So although we're gonna to ask town meeting for an appropriation of 65,000, again, we'll go out for a detailed quote and it will be, this was this the worst case scenario, it will likely be a little less than that. So our total capital budget that we're looking for, and this is going right here into the motions, if you look at Article 6, the number 63686, the C Capital Planning Committee is recommending the board change it to 78686. And it reflects a spending total from three funding sources this year of $304,689. That's what these three numbers would add up to. The 161,003 out of capital stabilization, the 65,000 for the treatment plant, and the 78,686 for, um, from stabilization for North Main Street reconstruction. Total again was what? 304,689. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. I've spoken about it way too much. Discussion or comments or questions of the board? Uh, well, I, I think part of the thing is when you start talking about the North Main Street, that we, A, you have to understand it's a two to three million dollar total job. So Right. Good point. And the timeline too, Tom, you was a good point. You're talking about north of two million dollars mm -hmm. with a significant portion of it being paid for by the state and federal government. And the timeline, you know, we still have to, and Bob, you can appreciate this on some level, maybe not. We have to, to participate in the TIP program. The town or the entity, whichever it is, bears the burden of bringing up to 75% complete project documents to the table. And then you're put in the pool and you're approved or not approved. Or you're in, actually, you're in a queue. You're going to be approved at some point. Well, well, we could all be down the cemetery by then, but at least, you know, you're in the queue. And I think, I think it's prudent uh, from the state's perspective to say, okay, Sunderland, you want to go ahead and do North Main Street? Hire an engineer and show us if you're serious. Right, you need some skin in the game. Right, so you need some yeah. skin in the game. So. Well, the other thing is that, that the tip committees mm -hmm. have identified Sunderland's project as a as a priority project also. Right. So it's not like 
it has been. Um, and, and the reason it's not ready to go, the money's not available yet, is because there's a couple other projects that ahead of that, us that were still being worked mm -hmm. on right. that that ended up being bigger than was anticipated. So these are all big long-term projects. When it comes down to it, right. just because of the time frames needed and everything. Good so, point. but I also but I also think it's important that our residents understand this is the type of monies infrastructures that infrastructure that that we're out there looking at all the time also. Yeah, it's a good point, Tom. You know, we're talking 10 years down the road or if once we started, I mean, this project now is, we had appropriations two budget cycles ago to get to 25%. We were already talking about spending north of $60,000 already. Again, by doing it in phases, it allows us to have that period of public comment. And to your point, it's not just project for this year. It's been something that's been in the works and will be in the future. Good point. So that's a record, go ahead. Back to the Article 4. So that's gonna change the bottom line on Article 4 as nope. well. Nope, only Article 6. We're only talking about Article 6. Article 4 is the operating budget. Right. Uh, excuse me. Yep. Right. yep. And again, we're, we've, we're now only talking about the Capital uh, Committee's recommendation. So that's the recommendation. I know it was long-winded getting there. Uh, that's what we brought forward. Um, any initial red flags jump up? Yeah, I got my head, no. If not, is there a recommendation to, is there a motion to recommend Article 6 as amended from this sheet right here? Uh, motion is amended. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Uh, aye. Three to zero. Okay, Bob, now we can go back to the budget. Not Article 4. These are only two pieces of homework on this document tonight. Uh, Article 4, the budget, Cherry, we plugged in from last week the 2%. Mm -hmm. uh, we've checked the funding sources. And it looks like we're going to propose um, raise and appropriate $6,674,000. Ambulance reserve, Bob, this will also come with a, a, a use of cash sheet. It'll come right from uh, the town, av that, available funds. Yeah. For a grand total budget, uh, free use of free cash of $103,000, sewer fund, peg access fund. And we're actually using a little bit of overlay surplus this year for the first time in a number of years because there is some. Yeah. Right? Uh, for a grand total of 7222574 And that's actually the operating, operating budget. And that'll be matched up with this sheet here. We'll have detailed sheets if anybody wants some at the uh, at the town meeting. That's an increase, grand increase of two hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars, four fifty-six. Tom, you've asked a couple times about our ability to raise and appropriate our two and a half growth this year. Actually, is about one hundred twelve thousand dollars total. So a budget increase here of what looks like three point three percent. Any questions? I mean, this is this is the eleventh of the eleventh hours. Mm -hmm. Only in that the budget process is pretty thorough and vetted. Go ahead, Bob. It's good to see your cash reserves continue to back to that programmatic. I think. Exactly. You know. One of the reasons this year for uh, redirecting the use of the percentage of free cash straight to stabilization, not capital, was capital has a slightly, capital stabilization by statute is a slightly narrower definition about what you could use that money from or for, where stabilization is, it's a standard definition. So put it there instead. Tom? I, I think it was interesting to hear from the search committee about what they thought about the police chief's salary and that actually about the total total budget mm -hmm. for the police department and it, it's important that in my opinion it's important that like the people that served on the search committee um, some there's a, a couple of members are very active in in the community and a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other people that were on the committee, not so much. That's important. Um, and, and I think 
when people get involved, they sometimes it's it's easy to criticize or it, it's easy to say we spend too much or we or whatever the whatever the thing is. But when you come in and actually see what's going on and get an understanding for what's going on, sometimes your opinions may change a little bit because you're exposed to it. And and I would say um, one of the things I like um, is our, our 120 North Main Street um, committee. Um, I think like for them sitting on that committee and when you're looking at senior housing and, and the, the need, you know, start talking about the need, I think the people that they, they may have not been for the senior housing to begin with, and I'm not saying they're against it, but they, it, it, it's easier, it's easier, it's more palatable now when they see what can be done because they've been involved with it. Right. This it's a it's a different uh, level of education on the particular um, element, whether it's senior housing or whether it's the search committee, as you said, Tom, someone who may go out and go. You know, I really had no idea that salaries were this high, this low, this means. We had no idea. But they served in the committee, and it's like, oh, you, you know, the, the curtain's drawn back a little bit. And you, you can understand a different layer of the challenge. You're exposed right. a little differently to the information. And, yeah. and again, I just think it's, I, I, I think it's important. I, I think, I, I personally think that senior work-offs, and hopefully we'll pass the veterans work-off, mm -hmm. I, I think by bringing people in, into the town office building and, and watch how things are done, it, it's an eye-opener right. um, to see what what goes on on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's not just smoking and joking. Right. I mean, there's a lot of work that gets mm -hmm. turned out of the... And I think by exposing our residents to that, I think it's good for us. I, I, and, and, and if it, excuse me, if they do find a problem, then it's for us to answer why something's not... You know, why, why that concern is valid or not not valid so good point um, an example a very recent example that Tom the capital improvement committee one of the members is in is, is took a particular interest in the uh, town office building phone system but he's also in the IT business and he looked and he's like oh yeah that easy next <laughs> he's like he just looked around the office like now nah, next Get that on there. So I'm just looking. So yeah, it was very interesting. And I think one of the things that people don't realize too is that we're expending money for that, but we're, that's going to allow us to save money. Yeah, good point, David. Because of the the system, the, the technology that we're using, rather than the old fashioned way. So good points. Tom, that was well played. Okay, uh, more discussion on Article Four. If not, is there a recommendation for a grand total budget of seven million two hundred twenty-two thousand five hundred seventy-four dollars for FY seventeen? Um, motion to recommend. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, the warrant is done. Sherry, we just had to change the Article 6 yep. number on the, on the final version. And excellent. Okay, Bob, what do you think? 1030. Is that the first night or the second night? Second night, 1030. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be 1030. Okay. Uh, next up here, we have a mutual aid. Any questions or concern, Bob? We'll get a we'll get the, the full on uh, updated copy with our Article Six reconstructed. And over the course of the week, the office will be continuing to work on the on the handouts for town meeting. Okay, we have an opt in. Sherry, I see here what looks like a modified agreement. This is council's recommendation to us about SCEMS. Yes. Okay, and this is for review and for a future yeah, for, week. For future There's a couple of interesting comments that counts caught my eye with respect to uh, council suggestions on a modified agreement, Tom, and we'll be spending time on that. Okay. So we have a David uh, correspondence from the planning board. This has to do with. The A, B, C, D articles, as they are going to be known. And the alphabet articles. The alphabet articles. <laughs> yep. All right. This is to the Board of Selectmen from the Planning Board, dated April 20th, 2016. In its monthly meeting on April 12th, 2016, the Planning Board voted unanimously 5-0 to zero 
to endorse the proposed discontinuance of the western portion of School Street from the eastern line of Parcel D extending to the Connecticut River as shown on the plan entitled Approval Not Required Plan of Sunderland, Mass excuse me, Plan of Land in Sunderland, Massachusetts, prepared for the Town of Sunderland, dated March 15, 2016, prepared by Harold L. Eaton and Associates, Inc. And we'll have all sorts of exciting color graphics color to graphics. show you. So recommendations oh, of the planning board in this case was to go about the discontinuance. And that, again, that's part of the steps, Tom, you had raised earlier about discontinuing a property. So we have a recommendation from the planning board. And we'll be bringing that forward to town meeting. And thank you, planning board, for taking that up. Okay, so next up, we have an opt-in form. What are we doing here, Sherry? Why do we want to participate in MEMA? Just a signature only in this case yeah, here? it's just a signature. Yeah. Okay. So we have a signature by the chair. Um, statewide Public Safety Municipal Aid Agreement. Now we have a regional agreement. Now this is a statewide, and this is under a mass general law. Anything we should be concerned about? Areas of concern that jump up by board members? Again, we do mutual aid with existing communities. Like they're just expanding the scope, I'm guessing, for larger incidents, really. Um, huh. Can I ask that this be moved until next week? Next week? I want a chance to read it. Yeah, I think it would be good. Hey, no. I, I, I did this. We, we did this collectively one time when the chief came in and was talking about countywide municipal agreement for police. And there was a, well, I mean, within a week, there was questions about, well, what does it really mean? Well, what right. it really means is it's not necessarily your adjoining community. It can be other communities and also impact of off-duty officers. Anyway, that was then. That's not this particular agreement, but we do want to take a little time to read that one. Uh, we have a request for an appointment from the town clerk. Vic. Good for you, Victor. Dave, you want to read that one? Yes. This is from uh, Wendy Hool, the town clerk, dated Thursday, April 14th, to the Selectman's office. Uh, could Victor Zimbruski be appointed by the Board of Selectmen as an election officer by, by the May 7th election? Thank you. With three exclamation points. Yes, and a smiley face. And a smiley face. Very nice. Okay, is discussion about... Victor, he's been volunteering as not only an election officer, but also, I have a call, is he a constable? Or, no, I'm sorry, election worker. Yeah, constable as well. well then thank you. Yeah, I agree. It's thank you so much, appreciate Victor. It. We do appreciate it. Yeah. Always a big smile. Uh, motion to appoint? Uh, motion. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero, please. Okay, that about concludes the agenda for tonight, Bob. You want to have a, a continued discussion all about town meeting other than the handouts, which is our homework. We'll be doing that. No. Uh, warrant's pretty clear. Yeah. Which one is this sheet or this sheet? We, vote, sheet? we vote on this one. That's available for people who want to take a, a deeper look. Because yes. there has been concern about, well, we're not looking at the same level of... Yeah. So, again, we'll be voting on the actual handout that you have, the one-page version. And if, again, people want to look at the 356 or more <laughs> cell line items, have we'll we have some available. Have we been on the website yet, the, the bigger one? We can. No, I think we maybe after we vote it, we should yeah. put it up there. Yeah. That way, if Good somebody point. has trouble sleeping one yep. night, they can always Good. pull it up and, well, you know, item look item at it. There. Yeah, Let's exactly. Put the line item budget up there, and we can hang that as early as tomorrow. We just yeah. voted it. Right. Might as well. Good point, David. And they can print it themselves. <laughs> Colors and all. You know. Go ahead, Tom. One thing, Mr. Chair, I'd like to uh, um, request that we get a meet a BOS meeting scheduled for the night of the town meeting before we go. Yep. So that we can meet in case we have any yep. last minute stuff to discuss. Sure, we posted mm -hmm. for 630. Yep, that's fine. That's what I think. Yeah. Catch, Tom. Okay, any other discussion? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, motion. Second. We have a motion made and seconded with a heavy nod from our director in the back. All those in favor of adjourn? Aye. Aye. 3.75 to zero. Call us out at 744. And thank you. Remember, town meeting's Friday. <laughs>